In today's video, I'll be making iodoform starting from potassium iodide. Iodoform is the iodine analog of chloroform and bromoform, however its properties are a bit different. Unlike the other two, it's a solid at room temperature and it forms bright yellow crystals. It also has a ridiculously strong odor which made cleanup for this reaction kind of a pain. As for its real life applications, it's often used in hospitals as an antiseptic, and because of this its odor is often described as the smell of hospitals. Anyway, to get started, we need to make some elemental iodine first. So to a beaker, I added about 10 grams of potassium iodide. I then rinsed out the smaller beaker with about 30 milliliters of water. I then began stirring the solution, and once all of the potassium iodide was dissolved, I added about 7 milliliters of 30% hydrochloric acid. This will protonate the iodide to form hydroiodic acid. Next, I added 100 milliliters of 3% hydrogen peroxide. This is a pretty big excess because I want to make sure that all of the iodide is out of solution. Elemental iodine is soluble in solutions of iodide, so this will make it a lot easier to separate out the elemental iodine. As you can see, the color change was pretty instant, and after a while, solid iodine begins to settle out of solution. I then poured the top layer of water off of the solid iodine that precipitated it out, and then I began rinsing it a few times with more water. This will help get rid of any hydrochloric acid or hydroiodic acid left over, as well as any hydrogen peroxide. Once I felt that the iodine was sufficiently washed, I proceeded to the next step, which is actually making our iodoform. Anyway, so to the beaker I added a little bit more water, and to this I shot in about 5 milliliters of acetone. Then above the beaker I situated a addition funnel, and this contained a solution containing about 1 gram of sodium hydroxide. I then began to slowly drip in the sodium hydroxide, and as you can see that causes the solution to go colorless for a minute, however the color will return. So what's happening here is the hollow form reaction. Basically, the elemental iodine is reacting with the acetone to form a triiodoacetone intermediate. The hydroxide in the solution then attacks the electrophilic carbon of the acetone. This causes our intermediate product to be kicked off and acetic acid forms in the process. The intermediate, being a carbanion, is very unstable and it picks up the hydrogen. This forms the acetate ion and our desired product, which is iodoform. Anyway, I let the entirety of the sodium hydroxide solution drip into our reaction, and this is kind of bad because iodoform actually reacts with hydroxides to form the iodide ion again. In total, I added about probably 1.5 grams of sodium hydroxide, and this definitely hurt my yield quite a bit. I definitely recommend just being more patient and trusting the process, and using just as much sodium hydroxide as you need to complete the reaction. Anyway, you'll know the reaction's done because you'll see the yellow precipitate of iodoform. And after this, I began vacuum filtering, which I forgot to record. In the end, I was left with about 2.2 grams of iodoform, which is about a 32% yield. Like I said, if I was more careful with my sodium hydroxide addition, I probably would have gotten a much higher yield. But in the end, I was just kind of happy to be done working with this stuff because its odor is so pungent. Anyway, if you like this video, consider subscribing or supporting on Patreon, and I'll see you in the next video.